Hi, my name is Beth and I'm a sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. Today's video is my final vlog for 2021. I'm going to give you a recap of the things that were happening in the final quarter of the year and then share everything that I made during the entire year. I think it's going to be fun. So let's dive right in. Uh, this year was a pretty unexpected year. Um, obviously it's the second year that we're in the pandemic and the first year of the pandemic I was super productive with sewing things um, partly because I didn't have a lot of other work. Um, all my other freelance work just like really died out during the first year or so. I had a lot more time um, plus I wasn't going anywhere so I felt super productive last year and I had a lot of plans for this year um, for patterns that I wanted to design and classes that I wanted to create and things just didn't work out the way that I had planned. So in 2021 um, I started getting more work which is great and I really had a lot more freelance work throughout the year but I also was having a really hard time with migraines and I talked about that in some of my other vlogs this year. Um, it really started getting bad in February and finally in April, I got a diagnosis of migraines and started some medications. And those along with um, supplements have really helped my mig migraine situation. So in July, I started getting better, um, feeling like I could actually do things during the day and was like feeling more like my old self. So I still have a lot of or a number of days during the month where I don't feel good, but for the most part, I'm back to where I was before. So I'm really happy about that. Um, I do have to be really careful um, just to make sure that I keep myself healthy and um, avoid any migraine triggers, but doing really well. I'm really happy about that. I'm really grateful that I was able to take the time to uh, really focus on my health and figure out what I needed to start feeling better. So it's definitely something I'm going to have to keep living with. Um, I've already been living with it for like 30 years. I just, it was never as bad as it was this year. So hopefully I don't get that bad, bad again, but it is what it is. I now know what I need to do when the migraines come on. So I did a lot less this year. Um, I did a lot fewer YouTube videos and I only released one sewing pattern but it is a really great sewing pattern. The sewing pattern I released this year is the Miri tank top, and it's a really basic tank top. I have a few. View A is a scoop neck, and view B is a V-neck with angled armholes, and it's finished with an all-in-one facing. This is designed to be a really beginner-friendly pattern, so if you're just getting started with garments, I highly recommend this and it comes with three cup sizes. So um, I'm really proud of this pattern. It was definitely a challenge to draft all those cup sizes just because it's so many pattern pieces, but it's a really great pattern. It's a really great wardrobe builder and some of my favorite makes of the year um, are actually hacks of this pattern. So it's also really versatile. So let's jump into things I made this year. Um, I made less than in years past, but I still did quite a bit of making. So I did obviously some garment sewing, some quilting, and some knitting and crochet. So let's start with the knitting and crochet. So the first thing I finished this year for knitting was this Emma tank top. Um, and to be honest, I have not worn it. Um, I think it's a little bit thick for me. Um, I just feel like it doesn't look that good on me. I don't really love it. I can't figure out when I should wear it. So I don't know. I think maybe I could try a little harder to wear it, but so far I've not worn it. Um, but oh well. <laughs> Sometimes that happens with these things we make. Um, the second thing I made is this Nanaimo cardigan, and I have a blog post about this. Um, it's a really simple knit. It's in a really thick, um, thick yarn. It's um, wool ease thick and quick. And I really like the color. I have some spots on it where like the fibers kind of coming out. I need to weave those ends back in, but it's gotten cold again here in LA. So it's definitely time for me to bring this sweater out again. 
Then another project I really enjoyed working on is this giant granny square blanket. And you might recognize some of the yarn from my Emma tank top. Um, this is just using a bunch of scrap yarn in like gray, black, brown, white colors. Um, so this, I just used like a traditional granny square pattern and started in the middle and kept going and going until I ran out of yarn. So it was a really fun way to use up a bunch of scraps and I've been enjoying using it when I'm sitting on the couch. I also knitted a pair of socks using self-striping yarn and I gave those to my brother for Christmas because um, his feet are just like a tiny bit bigger than mine and he said he wanted warm socks so it was the perfect timing of me finishing the socks and him asking for some. So I've sent those off to him but meanwhile I've been making myself another pair of socks and this is using a DK weight yarn. Um, I'm using Kindred from Knit Picks and I really like it because it's alpaca and cotton and I'm allergic to wool, so I can't um, use a lot of traditional yarn. So I really like this one. Um, the pattern is by Summerly Knits, and um, I'll put links to it down in the show notes. I bought a bunch of her patterns around Thanksgiving time, and I just really love her designs. They're really colorful, and I bought a bunch of yarn from Knit Picks around that same time, so I have a lot of sock projects left to do. All right, I have just a few quilting projects. And the first one, this is a quilt that I finished in January. And it's kind of a lap size quilt. And this one is called my Rejects and Leftovers quilt. Um, it's just a bunch of leftover and rejected sewing blocks from one of the first quilts I ever made. Um, so you can see like there's a practice nine patch here. Yeah, so it's just kind of a random quilt um, using up all these leftovers. Um, again, it's a nice lap quilt. This is my freewheeling single girl quilt and I finished this a few months ago. This one I started I think September 2019. So this was a huge deal to finish this quilt and I still need to send it off to get quilted. But I'm planning to send it off along with another quilt that I just finished, which actually has kind of a similar color theme. This is the Star Pop quilt, and this is designed by Emily Dennis. So here again, I'm using um, leftover fabric from my garment sewing. So I had a whole bunch of like gingham and seersucker that I'd put aside. When I first saw the pattern for the Star Pop quilt, I thought it would just be perfect for this um, fabric that I'd set aside because it's just like really fun and summery. So um, I'm looking forward to getting both of those quilted. I'm really trying to move through my stash, especially during quarantine. I'm kind of, you know, I'm not going out to the stores. I'm just at home sewing, but there's still a lot more to sew. <laughs> a lot more scraps, a lot more um, lengths of fabric that I have to get through, but slowly I'm getting there, moving through it. I also made a number of garments this year, including this jacket. This is the Ayora jacket, and um, it's a quilted jacket pattern, but I took my scraps and um, sewed it all together using my improvisational style and made it into this quilt coat. It took months and months. Um, I don't know that I would want to make a quilt coat again because it took so long. But now that it's really cold, I'm really glad that I have it because it's keeping me nice and cozy. Yeah, so I guess we're jumping into the garment making. We've transitioned from quilting, nice little segue of a combo quilting garment object. Um, so also at the beginning of the year, I made this turtleneck. This is the Lenny turtleneck by Seamwork. And I made this pattern a few times. Um, it's really like a tried and true for me. And I made this actually to go with my cardigan, my Nanaimo cardigan. I wanted something that was really fitted. So I cut it in a size small. So it's pretty tight. I should have double checked the stretch in my fabric, but it has enough stretch that I can get it on and off, okay. So as I mentioned, I released the Miri tank top this year. So I have a bunch of these that I made. Um, just really great basics. It's a woven fabric, so perfect for summer. Um, this one is one of my favorites. This is a hack to the Miri tank top with a button back. 
And I really love this one. I wore it a lot. It's in a black linen, so just really luxurious and beautiful. I feel like it's very classy in a solid black. And then I also made this one in a striped fabric and I made matching shorts and I'll pop a picture in here. So I have a cute little set. The shorts are the Flint Shorts by Megan Nielsen. Um, and again, just like a really nice, comfortable outfit for summer. And this is one of my favorite dresses that I made this year. This is the Miri tank top with a gathered skirt added. Um, I did tutorials for how to sew gathers and this has inseam pockets. And I have a tutorial here on YouTube about how to sew the inseam pockets. So I made this out of a rayon and it's just been so comfortable, really nice. It was one of my favorite things to wear this year. So I made three more dresses this year and I used all fabric that's been in my stash for a little while, which was really great. So the first one, this was really a favorite. This is the Darling Ranges dress by Megan Nielsen. And there's a blog post about this. Um, it has, it's really soft fabric. Again, just like the Miri hack, it's really comfortable. It has this gathered waist, but it's loose fitting. So really nice for summer. And uh, then I made the parasol dress and this is by Chris Wood Sews. Um, don't think I've actually worn it yet, but I do feel like it was the perfect fabric pattern pairing. Um, so hopefully this next summer, like once it gets warmer, I'll be wearing this. And this is the Reggie dress by Seamwork. And I finished this in November, so it's a little bit too cold to wear it now. Um, so I'll have to wait till spring to like really test it out, but I do have a blog post all about it. Um, this one was the first garment that I used with my projector, which I talked about in my last vlog. And I need to do some more testing with the projector. That's one of the things for the new year. Um, I wanna test out that more and be able to share my tips and findings for using it. But I think this is a really pretty dress. It's a little different than my usual style. Um, but Again, it's a deep stash fabric and I've been wanting to have a wrap dress with it and I'm really happy with this one. Um, it's a faux wrap, but I did a full bust adjustment on the um, bodice and the fit is really good. So very happy with this one. One more thing from this last year is I did a kids sewing class with Rebecca Page. They had a summit for kids sewing classes and I taught a little class on how to make a drawstring backpack. Um, I think it's probably too late to sign up and see that class, but maybe in a year or two, I'll be able to do um, a tutorial for this again. It's It was just a really fun little project. And I'm actually doing another class with Rebecca Page later in January. So um, it's gonna be a beginning sewing summit and it's free to sign up and watch during the first week. And then after that, I believe you have to pay a little bit to hold on to the classes longer. But if you wanna learn more about that, just make sure to sign up for my newsletter down in the show notes. So the only project I really have going right now is my sock knitting. I have a little bit of scrap piecing that's going on. I'm not sure where I'm gonna go with that, but I do wanna make some more scrap projects to share with my quilting course. Um, I'm a member of this quilting community that's hosted by Zach Foster, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes. I really enjoyed being a part of that community and just getting a lot of inspiration from other quilters. Um, I've started to get a little bit bored with my style of improvisational quilting just because I've been doing it so long. I feel like I need to bring some new elements to it. So hopefully this year I'll have some time to experiment and try a few things with my quilting. And of course I will share that with you. And then kind of things that are at the top of my list for making are just some new underwear. I really wanna try a high rise style of underwear and there's a new um, pattern from Seamwork that I wanna try. So maybe later today or tomorrow, I'm gonna to get my projector out and cut those out and give it a try. And then I also wanna make some joggers out of this like really thick fabric that I bought last year. I made my mom a pair and she loves them. So I think I have enough to make a pair for myself. Another pattern I really wanna try, um, I bought the Marjorie Sling Bag from Hey June last month. And I'll put an image in here. It's just a really cool design. 
Um, so I need to see if I have the hardware and fabric that I need for it, but I'm looking forward to trying that one out. And at the beginning of the year, I was also planning to make some backpacks for my emergency earthquake kits and I never got around to it. So I might use the Marjorie sling bag and another backpack pattern. Um, those are still all a little TBD. A couple other quick things. For Christmas, I was gifted a subscription to Quilt Folk magazine. Um, they're based in Eugene, Oregon, which is my hometown. And each issue focuses on a different region of the country. So this one's about Idaho. They sent a back issue. Um, I think they're just like really beautiful photos, great stories. I'm looking forward to digging into this. And then I also got this book, Kathy Fassett in the studio. I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly, but I have really admired his work for a long time and I'm looking forward to reading this one. I really love that he works in a lot of different mediums and he has patterns for knitting and for quilting and he just has this really um, signature style of all these colors and geometric shapes. So I'm excited to read this book too. Well, I think that's about it. I hope this wasn't too disjointed of a little recap for 2021. I want to thank all of you for following along with me here. I'm going to put links down in the show notes to my end of year blog post um, so that you can check out all the blog posts for the things that I talked about and for my Miri tank top. And in case you missed it, I also have a free 2022 printable calendar. So definitely um, check that out. You get it for free when you sign up for my newsletter. So I will have links to all that stuff down in the show notes. Wishing you a very happy new year and happy sewing. Mm -hmm.